How's it going guys? Welcome back to this Bushi and welcome back to Karawa Sojo. Last time we had a really uh oh, I love the title I came up with for last week's episode, The Epitome of Cute. Emmy is freaking adorable. And the whole exchange we had when we got to her room was like, oh, it made me melt inside. It was so good. However, we have this nagging doubt slash suspicion, which I think is kind of unfounded. Emmy's making it pretty clear she likes this. <laughs> <laughs> the signs are there, but hey, the, the, it's, it's a typical thing. It's actually real. When you're in the situation, you tend to ignore those things because you're paranoid. And so he's a little paranoid about the captain of the track team who seems fairly interested in her. And she seems to not want to talk about him, uh, which makes it feel like there is something there. Like maybe they once were dating or he's actively asked her out, but she's like not been interested but she doesn't feel comfortable talking about it. You know, like there's a lot of things that could be going on. And that's the trouble is that because she hasn't clarified, uh, clarified it, um, uh, uh, Hisao is really freaking out about it. And it's not her fault. He's being paranoid uh, because he's lovesick. And that's the problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why love is so stupid because it makes us all idiots. <laughs> but it hopefully will work out, right? Right? Like it can't possibly go wrong. No, it, it, it could absolutely go wrong. So I'm hoping that if I get to make choices, I can make the right ones and that things will be okay. So let's put on our big boy boots and just go for it. <laughs> a night of restlessness has left me feeling a little groggy this morning. The events of the previous day keep intruding upon my mind. I bet. The memory of how Emmy felt against me. The memory of our wrestling match. And most bothersome, the memory of her nightmare. She was in so much pain. I can't stop wondering what it must be like for her to wake up with nobody there. The shower shocks me awake with hot water. Awake, but still worried. What will happen today? Will things just go back to normal? End of the episode, back to the status quo. There was a connection yesterday, something that nearly pushed us past the boundaries of a normal friendship. Would that have been so bad? No. My mind keeps going back to look in Emmy's eyes after our pillow fight. It almost seemed like she was daring me to go on. Almost. But I can't know for sure. That's the trouble with that kind of stuff. It's like, you just, you get in those moments and you're like, you have to teeter on the edge of like, do I just be bold and go for it? Or am I way overstepping my boundaries? Oh, it sucks. <laughs> anyway, the track captain's probably first, of her, first in her affections. I doubt it, man. But even as I say that, my mind's already snorting just derisively. I'm just looking for an excuse, any reason for everything to go wrong. A reason to not try. It says I've... I've seen, I've seen the two of them together outside of track practice, and clearly he's never visited. Emmy said as much herself. If they were close, he'd surely visit. I'm such a wuss. I have to just, I don't have to just go for it anyway. Darn the consequences. That's what Emmy would do, I think. Heck, I know that's what she'd do, which is par partially why I'm convinced there's no interest on her end. She hasn't acted either. Well. I don't know. That's the thing. It's like people act differently around people who they like. That's the thing. It's like one of the good litmus tests for if somebody likes you is if they treat you differently than other people, especially other people of that, of that, I don't know, like, se like sex or mindset or, or group, you know, like for my relationships, they were guy, girl, like she would treat me differently than other guys. That's a good indication that there's something there. Um, what that is, of course, is still up for debate, but you can at least be confident that there's something special. Emmy might feel a lot more confident about just random stuff, but when it comes to relationships, she might be a lot more hesitant because it's a lot more important than simply just standing up for what she wants. Maybe because this maybe maybe because of this track captain, it's possible she's gotten into a bit of unrequited crush thing going on. But who would be able to clarify their relationship? I'm sure it's, it's sure that can't be Emmy. She'd probably just laugh and ask why I wanted to know, and I'm not ready to answer that. Rin. Rin would probably just give me some cryptic answer or something. Then, with my luck, she'd just ask Emmy, who would ask me why I wanted to know, and I'd already covered that point. I wonder. Could I get away with asking the nurse? He seems pretty protective of Emmy. I'm sure he'd, he'd know if something was up. And he owes me for not letting Emmy know I for he forgot to tell me about her being ill, so he'll keep quiet. What if you ask me why I want to know, though? 
I can shake him off. Just that I'm curious as a friend. He'll buy that, won't he? And plus, he obviously, he already knows. <laughs> of course. That settles it then. After the run, I'll talk with him while Emmy's waiting outside the office. There's no sign of Emmy when I arrive at the track. Is she still too ill? That's, that's definitely not good. She definitely seemed like she was feeling better. I decided to give her 10 minutes. I'm a little early. She was ill yesterday, so if she takes a while to show up, it shouldn't be surprising. Still, I'd hate to jump, just waste my time, so I occupy myself by stretching and pacing back and forth anxiously. What if I went too far yesterday? What if she didn't come back because she's embarrassed? Oh my gosh, it's like replaying my high school life. It's like all my little monologues in my brain were just like this. What if... You're early again, he said. I'm impressed. Just like that, I feel some of the tension leave my body. He's like, oh, thank goodness. And he seems bright and cheerful as usual with no sign that she was ill the other day. Much less a half than restful sleep. Still, I have to ask. Sleep well last night? It's just a throwaway question. Small talk. The sort of thing people ask someone when they bump into the cafe when they're getting their morning coffee. But not for us. At least not for me. I don't know if Emmy realizes that I'm actually concerned about how well she slept last night, but the question does give her pause. After a short moment of what seems like her genuinely pondering this, she nods. Yep, she did. Was it because of me? Did I actually help? Or are you just saying that to get me to stop asking questions? Stop! Just stop, Hissel! Don't do what I did! Don't overthink it, man! <laughs> Good to hear. Emmy grins and begins warming up. So, ready to begin? Pfft, am I ready? Of course I'm ready. I was born ready. Emmy laughs as up at my bravado and we take off running. <sighs> I keep a steady pace the whole time, breathing steadily. I still feel dead at the end, but at least I don't gasp like a fish out of water now. Emmy's positively beaming after the run today. Nice job, he Sal. You're improving. You'll be half as fast as me in no time. The last line is delivered to the teasing grin that I have grown all too used to. Oh, how exciting. Emmy begins to run her sprints while I take a cool lap down. A cool down lap. Wow, I flipped that around. She's really pushing herself today. By the time I'm done with my lap, she's laying across one of the bleachers looking exhausted. Goodness, not pushing a little too much today, are you? You did just have a cold, you recall. Emmy gives me an annoyed snort and sits up. Nah, I'm just trying to make up for lost time, that's all. I went twice as hard today, you know? A good run always gets the kinks out, you know? Clears the mind, too. Oh? Emmy nods vigorously. Yep, it's a great outlet for that sort of thing. She does not explain further, and I don't ask. I suspect I know the reason she went so hard today. Being sick had nothing to do with it. Something's bothering her. Yeah, she's probably trying to figure out how she does the next step, or, like, it encourages you to take the next step. It's a weird dance, and I feel like culturally the females have it harder obviously i'm hoping this starts to change and i i love it when it does like i think it's one of the coolest things ever when, when a girl would ask me out like that made my day and usually it was a, a good way to get me to to really notice somebody who i may not have been paying much attention to i still remember to this day i was actually thinking about this this week for some reason it was like um the first time I had been working, we were doing an interesting, we were doing like surveys of uh, farm fields for a summer job I had. It was a really weird job. Pretty much we got paid to drive around and look at what people had planted. It was kind of, honestly, business was a little sketch, but <laughs> I, we got paid for it and it was just something that filled me, uh, filled my time until I found something more solid. Uh, but while we were out there, um, we went out to dinner somewhere and I remember like, I was just having a conversation with my co uh, coworker and we were just chatting and ordering food. I remember I felt like, oh, I'll get a treat for myself today. I'll get some apple pie. It's one of my favorite desserts of all time. Apple pie. And I remember I ordered an apple pie, but like after I had like half of it, I was just full. I was just like, oh, I can't finish this, but I wanted to keep, take it home. So I asked the, the server, the server who's like, as it's like, I think she's been popping around and you know, being a typical server. I wasn't really paying her attention. Um, but I mean, I'm polite and I told her, I was just like, I was like, yeah, uh, I'd like to get a box for this. I love the pie, but I just can't finish it tonight. And she's like, okay. So she goes and she, I think she even, 
Yeah, she just looked kind of strange. She like took the pie to go put it in the container. Normally they just bring you the container, which by the way, if you're not from the United States, this might be a foreign kind of thing. And apparently this is a very US, uh, Canada kind of thing, I suppose. But yeah, like it's fairly common to order food, have too much of your food, and then they give you a box to take the rest home with. Like apparently there's a lot of countries where that would be like horrifying. Like you never ask for a takeaway box, <laughs> but um, in America, it's pretty common. Proportion sizes are huge. And I can't finish most of them. I like never order dessert usually because not because I'm not interested in trying different desserts, but because I just don't have room. Uh, so anyway, so she takes the plate away. I didn't really think much of it, but in hindsight, it definitely seemed a little odd. And then she brought back the container with our check and said, have a good night. And we leave. I later that night, like a few hours later, I was just like, oh, I'll have some nibbles of that pie. I'd, like I wanted to have it while it was still fresh. And I like I worked out a little room after going, uh, I think I'd done some laps in the pool or something. And I opened it up and there's a piece of paper in there. And it was uh, her phone number asking me to call her. I was so complimented. I was so like blown away because it was like the first time anyone had done something like that. It immediately like made my day. And I, but I also felt terrible because we were only in the area for like the weekend. I was going back home. It was like four hours away from where I lived. And so I figured honestly, it's just like, I don't know anything about this person. And even if we did try and hit a chord, like going out would be just incredibly hard and so I could I took the coward way out and I just didn't call but I just knew like there was nothing gonna come of it I was already interested in somebody else as it was like there was just nothing that was gonna come around of it but it, just that feeling was great so anyway though in American culture the reason why I even got into this is that that kind of stuff is fairly uncommon oftentimes the pressure the social pressure is for the guy to initiate um, there's also that the cult of chivalry that the guy typically pays for the meals and pays for the dates and organizes and plans it all. Um, I don't think it's quite fair. Uh, every time I really got started dating somebody seriously, like maybe the first few dates were like that, but if we actually started like a relationship, typically it balanced out eventually and like we would plan things together. We'd, we'd, we'd split the bills, you know, like, like that was just the way I, I did it. And the, the people I dated also tended to be interested in that type of, of way. But it's difficult just because culturally, it's harder for the girls to take the first step because there's really not, a, like the tradition is not, is against that. And so it can be tough to fight against. So maybe that's what Emmy's facing right now. Oh, that was a long story. I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe the nightmare, maybe something else. Maybe you, that's not my place to pry. She'll tell me if she wants me to know. I'm sure that comes in handy. You have no idea. The sincerity in her voice confirms my suspicion. The only problem is, even though I'd, I'd know she'd tell me if she wanted me to know, I still want to know. Something on your mind, then? Amy doesn't seem surprised by my question. She thinks, yeah. Instead, she shrugs. Nah, it's not worth getting worried about. She seems as if she's trying to convince herself as much as she's convincing me. I open my mouth as a, a, to ask if yesterday's responsible for her current state of mind, but I think better of it. Well, good, you have a brain. <laughs> Too much risk of her taking the question the wrong way. Besides, I'm not even sure of myself what I want to think about yesterday. Really, I only can get, I get about as far as how I felt to have Emmy sleeping next to me before my brain shuts off. Having her before me now, covered in sweat and looking wryly at me, she's making it difficult to think. Yeah, that's the other problem, is freaking dating people when you're, like, really into them. Like, your brain does shut off. It's, it's really annoying, especially because afterwards, like, you think about it and you're just like, Ah, oh, what did I do that for? Yeah, I hear ya. We'd, be we'd better hurry and see the next. We're waiting short on time. Aren't we always? Emmy smiles at this. A dry chuckle that seems most un emmy like too true. For a brief moment, she looks old, worn down by some old hurt. But just like yesterday, I can almost see her shul shouldering the burden and straightening up slightly. And then she's back to being Emmy again. Come on then, Heathel. Race ya. Oh, with a sudden smile, she darts off. Hey, no fair! Take off after her, knowing I won't catch her, but not caring. Even if there's no chance of catching her, I'll still run after her. Ooh, that's a cool theme. That's like, that would be the theme of the whole freaking story. Emmy's waiting for me at the door as I arrive. Well, well, look who's finally shown up. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your victory while you can. Amy grins and the nurse pokes his head out the door. Well, there you are. 
Come on, he said. Come on in, he said. It would have become a familiar routine by now. He checked my blood pressure and my heart rate. A bit fast today, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of raced Emmy here. The nurse laughs. That's never a good idea. He leans into whisper to me in a conspiratory manner. I don't know if you've heard, but Emmy's a bit of a track star. I reel back at box of prize. Really? She'd never mentioned it before. The two of us share a laugh. Did she do okay today? Cold seemed to bother. Cold seemed to bother her. Why didn't you ask her? He rolled his eyes in exasperation. Of course, I'm not going to. I'm going to ask her too, but she'll tell me that she thinks I don't have any problems, regardless of whether or not she did. So I'm asking you, because you're her friend, and would probably tell me if she had trouble today. When he puts it that way, it makes a lot more sense. She seemed pretty good today, if a little more tired than usual. She was already feeling better when I dropped by yesterday, so I'm not that surprised. The nurse nods, though I noticed he, he had tensed slightly when I mentioned yesterday's visit. Well, that's good to hear. I figured it was just a 24-hour thing. Emmy tends to recover quickly from colds and the like. Hey, speaking of Emmy, are she and the track captain... You know... Look, a suspicion crosses his face. Why do you ask? Well, I, it just seemed like they're kind of close, and I was just curious, you know? So, and I'd never ask her, because that'd be, like, kind of embarrassing. So far, so good. Not to really sell it. Besides, I think they'd make a cute couple. The nurse laughs. Well, I don't suppose you're the first to think that. But I think I can say with some certainty that the two of them will never do anything like that. Certainty? Yep. Not that I could tell you, of course. Confidentiality and all that. Huh, yeah, right. You just like holding your secrets over my head. That too. Right, now get out of here. I'm a busy man, you know. Choo -choo -choo. I roll my eyes as last statement and head, to the, head, head out the door, motioning to Emmy to go in. The whole time I keep, I'm trying to keep from doing a celebratory dance. The two of them will never do anything like that. That's precisely the sort of thing I wanted here. I'm half tempted to make this some sort of move on Emmy right now, but I think the nurse would probably disapprove. Besides, I still don't know exactly how Emmy feels about me. Well, you won't until you make a move! That's the point of making a move. I mean, it's obvious that she cares about me as a friend, but something more than that? I can't be certain. <laughs> of course you can't! Do you know how rare it is when people will just tell you how they feel about you? That doesn't happen very often. You got lucky last time, but of course that time they nearly killed him, so maybe that's not actually lucky at all. Even so, I can't help but feel hopeful. Just need to figure out a good time to tell Amy exactly how I feel. That puzzle should keep me occupied for the rest of the day at least. I don't know. Yesterday would have been perfect. The rooftop is completely deserted. Normally I could count on Rin to be up here before me, but she's strangely absent. I wonder if she decided to accompany Emmy to the cafeteria for once. That seemed pretty unlikely, but it's all I can think about right now. Part of me wants to go look for Rin, but a far larger part of me is too pleased with the way the sun feels on my skin to care. I pick idly at my lunch while I wait for Emmy and Rin to show up. It does not take long for me to hear the sounds of someone coming up the stairs. I wait until the door begins to open before talking. Took you long enough. Keeping me waiting for you, honestly. Keeping me waiting for you, honestly. The two of you are... Huh? Well, that's odd. The only person standing at the doorway is Emmy, who looks mildly confused. Oh, Rin, are you trying to give us space? Come on, we enjoy you being here. What do you mean, huh? It's me, you know, Emmy. We run in the mornings. She grins. I feel my heart jump slightly in my chest at the sight. Yes, I knew that. I'm just confused. Where's Rin? Emmy's grin is replaced by a rather guilty looking expression. Yeah, about that. I kind of, sort of. Give her a call. Oh dear. <laughs> Am I at risk too? It would make sense after all. I mean, I were in close contact the other day. <laughs> close contact. That's a bit of an understatement. So what did she and Rin do after that got her ill? Steady on, old lad. Don't go down that road. <laughs> yeah, but she's jumping the gun much. Rin's just probably got a worse immune system than me. Amy seemed shocked by my comment, like she hadn't considered that before. I hope not. I'll feel terrible if you get ill because of me, he Sal. Oh man, I think I feel a fever coming on. Ugh. 
Emmy looked horrified, then quickly shifted into a more angry expression. He Sal! You stop getting sick this instant! <laughs> oh, yes ma'am. I won't have it! Impulsively, she seized me by the collar. Are you listening to me? He Sal's immune system. Get your, get your butt in gear. Give a smart salute. Oh, wow, for this e, he's on duly noted, ma'am. Then he steps back and nods satisfied. Get. You are not allowed to miss our morning runs, after all. <laughs> you missed our morning run. Amy crosses her arms and looks at me haughtily. Yes, that's a special case. It was me and not you. That's not an explanation at all. Amy looks flabbergasted. You're kidding, right? That explanation makes perfect sense. No, it doesn't. It's blatant double standard. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Oh, fine. Amy seems pleased with her victory. Anyway, is Rain gonna be okay? She's not terribly ill, right? Amy shakes her head. No, she'll be fine. I got her some cold medicine that should help her. Although I probably should have made sure she didn't take them all, try and take them all at once. Oh, fetch. Yeah, that'd be bad. She's done it before, you know. No, oh, that, 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 that's bad. Somehow, I don't find this all that surprising. Like, that reason want to pay attention to maximum dose additions and such. Okay. It's a much more innocent take on what I was assuming, so... Whew, maybe that's probably more likely. You should probably check on her later, just to make sure. Emmy shrugs. I'll stop by after practice. She'll be fine until then. I nod, figuring the line of conversation's over. The only problem is, I don't know what else to talk about. So, you got any more track meets coming up? This is a terrible roundabout way of trying to see if she's free on the weekend. If she's free, then maybe I can ask her on a date or something. Hey, you know, it's not a bad way to go about it. I mean, it's, I mean he could just ask if she's free this weekend. You know, that's the, 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 the same thing to do, but you know, when love's involved, you never do the same thing. Well, assuming I can get myself to actually form the words. Amy shakes her head. Yeah, not for the next couple weeks, I think. The season's winding down. Oh yeah, I came in right in the middle of things, didn't I? Does that mean exams are coming up soon? I should probably look into that. What do you do on weekends if there's not a meet? And the eyebrow goes up and Emmy gets a teasing look on her face. Oh no. You're awfully inquisitive today, aren't you? I shrug and I hope it looks casual. Just making conversation. I don't know what it's like to be on the track star after all. <laughs> Flattery. She waves a hand idly. I'm not actually that good, you know. You just so happen to see me on a good day, Saul. So. You liar. <laughs> right, yeah. But humility is a sign of a good athlete. At least that's what my dad used to say. Oh, well, that shifted gears. Here we go. She shrugs and tries unsuccessfully to hide the rather troubled expression her face has taken on. Hey, what's up? You seem bothered by something. Uh, duh. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, stick up with the beat. You, you So you ask, and then if she's looking really glum and doesn't want to talk about it, you change topics. Emmy starts to deny it, then sighs in defeat. I wonder if she's too tired from being sick to get herself to deny it like usual. Or if she actually trusts me, just, uh, trusts me enough at this point to open up. Well, you remember last night? I do. Uh, do I ever. I settled, I settled, settled for nodding, however. That's not the first time it's happened to me. Actually, I get them kind of... She pauses, but it's suddenly occurring to her what she's doing. It's almost like she's breaking some sort of personal rule here. But she starts up again, choosing her words carefully. Well, not often, but on occasion. It's just been one of those weeks where that's what happens. A sigh escapes her and she looks terribly frustrated. I reach over and give her a hug, which, unlike last time, doesn't seem to shock her. Instead, she seems to relax as my arms wrap around her. You better freaking ask her out, man. She's freaking, like, she's open for it. She would absolutely love to go on a date with you at this point. Maybe not right now, but don't worry about it, man. You're good. We stay that way for a while. Hey, you know, I was serious last night. You really can't talk to me if stuff like this is bothering you. It's always difficult to do this sort of thing solo, you know? Emmy smiles and breaks the embrace, but stays leaning on my shoulder. Thanks, Esau. I'll be fine, I think. I can already see her see her reassembling herself, getting ready to bottle it up again. Guess the topic's closed now. So hey, 
Given any more thought to that career survey? Can't say I have. I don't tend to plan very far ahead, you know. Although I suppose I could start looking into college, huh? I shrug. I suppose. Unless you were serious about that Pyra thing. <laughs> Last I checked, Pyra's don't need much, of, need much from universities. <laughs> By the way, thank you. Some of you actually sent me pirate art of Emmy, and it made my day. Thank you so much. <laughs> I will gladly take more of it. And if you could, it would be nice if more, uh, if you do have said art, to go to the Discord channel and post it in either the fan art section or in the section for this uh, visual novel, like the general chat, not the, uh, not the uh, spoiler chat, unless of course it's spoiler stuff. So maybe, maybe save the best art if it has spoilers in it for later. Um, and also, of course, if it's and not safe for work, make sure you mark it. Just, you know, don't surprise anybody. <laughs> like, like it, I, I have no problem with it being on there. Just make sure it's tagged properly and all that stuff. Anyway. <clears throat> Unless there's, like, a pirate university out there somewhere. Emmy giggles and starts to look a little like her old self, but there's a new element to her expression. Impish. That's how I'd describe it. Emmy looks impish, looking up at me with her head nestled into my shoulder. Ooh, boy, uh, she's giving you the signal, man. I don't know. I don't know. This is like, if you're going to make a move, this is a good time to make a move. Would you come off with me if I ran off to be a pirate? Of course I would. Who in their right mind would pass off the opportunity to be pirates with you? Well, when you put it that way, not sure. She giggles again. I noticed that my heart seems to have sped up. It's probably due to Emmy's proximity to me. Uh-oh. Hold the phone. Don't don't die. <laughs> a hint of strawberries again. Can't help but grin as I gaze down at her. She's happy again. Hey, you sell? Hmm? <laughs> Thank you, Emmy, for being awesome. Veg, I'd date the crap out of Emmy if I, she was a real person. My gosh. This would be such a big, like, I'd love it when people can be so forward. If you're going to kiss me, you probably should do it soon. I think the lunch bell's about to ring. My thoughts grind to a sudden halt. I'm pretty sure my mouth is hanging open in shock. I can imagine a string of, huh? That amuses Emmy even more. You were thinking about it, weren't you? She sits up, bringing her face level with mine. <laughs> Well, he's either going to do it or have a heart attack. I don't know which. <laughs> I'd probably enjoy it, you know. You're really... Well... She briefly composed herself, looking like she's about to say something important. If you haven't figured it out by now, I think I've developed a bit of a crush on you. Da 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 <laughs> It's like, yes! <laughs> You're going to have to do something about that. This time her grin cir 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 uh, circuits several important thought processes. Short circuses. At some point I turn toward her, and at another point my arms move around my around uh, to uh, move to around my neck. Her arms move to around my neck. <laughs> my brain short circuiting. And yet another, my arms wrap around her waist. And I'll be darned if I could tell precisely when that happened. Because at the moment there's only a voice in the back of my head yelling at me to kiss her. I look into Emmy's eyes. There it is. The thing I saw yesterday in the bed, it's there again. It suddenly strikes me that she's worried that I'll reject her. What a silly worry for her to have. Yes! Oh, it's so cute! Oh my gosh! Oh, her lips taste faintly of strawberries. She leans into the kiss, her arms tightening around the back of my head, making sure that I don't pull away. Not that there was any danger of that. There's a churning feeling in my gut. The world, world, the world falls away. It's just me and her and this bench. Arms tighten, drawing her waist closer, entranced by the feel of her. I inhale her scent, my mind trying desperately to memorize everything about how she tastes, how she smells, how she feels. Ah, oh, first kisses, man. They are so crazy. <laughs> the ring of the bell snaps us both back to reality and we break the kiss. Emmy's cheeks are slightly flushed and she seems to be catching her breath. In her defense, so am I. We stand there for a moment, trying to wrap our heads around what we've just done. Emmy's the first to break the silence. So, want to grab dinner after I'm done with practice? What a coincidence. I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, actually, I suppose I was being some kind of proper date this weekend or something, but that thought was there, I, I think. 
Emmy gives me a playful shove. Yeah, right. You were still in shock how incredibly awesome I am at kissing. We began to head down the stairs back to our respective classrooms. Woo! <laughs> hey, I didn't, I didn't, um, hey, I didn't see you taking it a talking immediately afterwards either. That, that I didn't. See you at the practice, he Sal. She leans in quickly, gives me a quick kiss in the middle of the hallway, sending me into another brief state of mental freefall. Yeah, don't don't judge picture. You can't have this. This is this is just for us. <laughs> As I head to my classroom, a giggling Misha greets me. Oh, of course, of course, she knows. Why, he Chan, you romantic, you. Did you confess on the rooftop? You did, you. Uh, actually, I think it was the other way around. This sends Misha to a, fit of, a fresh fit of laughter. Young love is so unpredictable, isn't it? This being Misha, I suppose I should have expected her to tease me over this. I guess. Before I can respond, Mateo's, ent Mateo's entered the room and Misha skips off to her seat, giggling all the while. I suspect that I'll get a lot of that sort of conversation now, especially seeing as how Amy kissed me right in the middle of the hallway. Yeah, that was freaking blatantly bold. But hey, you know, I mean, Amy's the kind of person who takes things... But like by the takes the range and just goes with it. So as soon as she made something official, I mean, she I don't think she really cares. Like the PDA is probably real easy for her. Wow. I like this episode. <laughs> somehow I don't care about that. For the first time since arriving here, my heart feels light. Ah. <sighs> Oh, Emmy. Act 3. Perspective. Interesting. So, a lot of dating games end with the first kiss and the relationship. Not that I thought it was going to end, but it is interesting to see a continuation of it, which is good. I think a lot more stories need that. But it's hard to do a multiple path story where you also, like, go through the dating. It requires a lot more writing and a lot more care, which again shows just how well crafted this story is. I'm really liking it. Kadawa Shoujo is really impressing me. And the fact that it's free is just flabbergasting to me. It's still, we're so lucky to live in a world where we get can this for free and play it and like really get to participate in it. And I can't wait to do the other routes either. But man, whoo, Emmy. Whoo, Emmy. My head's a spin all through Mattel's class. I'm going to have dinner with Emmy. Who wants to be my girlfriend, no less. A date. And then she kissed me. I kiss. I keep going back to it, playing it in my mind again and again. Everything about that moment felt so right. My mind drifts off, lost in thoughts of Emmy. Nikai. Hello. Seems like I've drifted a bit too far. Huh? What? Oh, God, you've contracted some kind of amnesia. Someone get the nurse. The class chuckles at Motel's antics. Sorry, sir. Hmm. Won't happen again, and and all that, right? Exactly. Mattel brightens considerably. Well, lovely to hear. I'd hate to have my star pupil slacking off after all. I've been doing well, but hardly qualify as a star pupil. I think. I'm fairly certain this class is the sort that everyone does well in, just memorizing formulas. True to my word, I managed to pay attention for the rest of the class. Ah, young love. Nikai, may I have a word with you? I wonder if I'm in trouble for earlier. Uh, sure. Am I in trouble? Mattel looks genuinely confused for a moment. I beg your pardon? He tilts his head to one side and thinks for a moment. Oh, that. No, no. You're not in any sort of trouble. There's just a question I want to ask you. What's that? Nothing terrible. Just wondering what your plans for after graduation are. Are you going to university? Yeah, I guess. Can't really see any reason not to go. Given it, given any thought to what you'll study? Not really, no. I figure I'll come up with something when I get there. Mattel laughs. <laughs> Taking things as they come, eh? I'd argue against it, but that's how I did things when I went to university. Well, not really. I knew I'd go into science, just wasn't sure which one. That was me, kind of. I tentatively wanted psychology, but the more I learned about psychology, like the job, like, I love the subject, but the job, like, ugh, no. And then I did some soul searching and discovered, like, you know, like, what's stopping me from studying what I love? And what I love is physics and chemistry. Like, I love understanding the universe. And 
so I was planning then to get a PhD, but then family came into picture, and I was like, oh, you know what, family is actually really important to me. And an aspect of something I always wanted to do, like a part of my PhD, I always hoped I could become a university professor someday. Because I love teaching, and I love sharing my passion. And so now my gears have shifted to be, well, what if I taught high school instead? And that's kind of what my direction is going now. We'll see if it sticks that way, but I'm pretty sure it will. I really think this is a good option for me. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm not sure which one. End up with physics. Hey! <laughs> but, but could just as well have gone for, gone for astronomy, what have you. I, is Mattel me? <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? If I ever get skinny, maybe I will be like you. I could cosplay as him. <laughs> Actually, I did go for chemistry for... The, there was all sorts of things. My toe trails off and proud slightly. I, my opinion would actually be, not that chemistry is easier, but I think it's easier. <laughs> like, physics is kind of super demanding. It's very, very heavy math. Chemistry can be more fun because it's a lot more tactile, but I love particle physics, quantum physics, and understanding, like, and astrophysics. Like, that's what I love. I love, like, learning about space and the grander universe and the way that everything interconnects. Chemistry kind of touches on that, so chemistry is something I've strongly considered, like, going into. But I think I'm going to land on physics, because I feel like it more, it hits more of those, like, things that I really, really like more. Takes a minute for him to recover his train of thought, and I wait patiently for him to continue. So, anyway, did a lot of physics as well, but I had an interest in that, but I wasn't sure if it was for me. So I went back to chemistry, and here we are, yes. He smiled at me enthusiastically, as if waiting for me to confirm that yes, here is where we are. Somehow, I get the feeling that Matoa had a plan for this conversation, but I'll be darned if I can figure it out. I'm sorry, I'm not following you. Mato frowns and rubs his chin a bit, looking perplexed. He then snaps his fingers as if he's remembered the point of all this was. Right, yes, you. Me? Yes, you should look into studying one of the sciences. You're fantastic at it. Unless you'd rather go into math, just go into math. Mutel made a sour face. I'm not a big fan of straight math. I always like to experiment more than the proofs. What is with this guy? He's like me. He's the, the, the what? Who are you and why are you me? <laughs> You're saying I should study science at university. Mutel seems thrown off balance by my question. Well, sort of. You could always join the science club. Trouble is, there's not actually a science club. <laughs> but there could be. You could even be a charter member. A founding father. Of course, you need to find other members. Well, only if you wanted to. We could start up with just the two of us. And, uh, I could give you things to read. We could talk about them. Did you, like, just lose a girlfriend or something? You sound really lonely right now, Mateo. Uh, uh, I could help you get ready for university, it's just as well. Wait. Mateo rummaged around his briefcase, tossing me a book. Read that. It's inter if it's interesting, then we can talk about it. A Brief History of Time. Oh, that's uh, Steve, uh, uh, Stephen Hawking's book, right? I don't know if I actually want to read this, but Moto seems pretty excited about it. What's it about? Time, space, space time, black holes and such. And it's not too dense. Just to see if that sort of thing's interesting for you, you understand? Yeah, for me. Hang around after class. We can either discuss it, or I can show you how to make explosives in the lab. <laughs> He waves his hand of inquisical expression. I'm joking, sorry. It's probably not joking. Still, I'll let you keep. I've, I've kept you here long enough for now. Think about science as a career path, Nakai. Okay? I think you'd enjoy it. Um. Okay, I will. Thank you for the book. I leave the classroom and look up at the clock. Quite a chunk of time to kill until Emmy's out of practice. Guess I'll give the book a look. Should probably shower as well. Showering before a date's only proper, right? Head back to the dorm. So, oh, Kenji, what are you going to say when I reveal it? I just, um, I was going to say something, like, but it was a little bit more, like, casual. Like, when we've commenced a relationship with a girl. I wonder why I'm supposed to meet Emmy anyway. She said after practice, but she didn't say where I should find her. I don't know, maybe go to the track field and meet her there? Guess I can just swing by the track. That's probably best anyway. If she needs a shower, I can just wait for her in her room or something. Or in the hallway. I guess that would be better as well. I take a quick shower, remembering to take my medication once I hop out. Now for a look at this book. Put set a timer or something, man. Don't be late. If you're late to this, I will punch you through the screen. <sighs> not a, they're not given to violence, but sometimes like these protagonists need it. 
Awake with a start. Oh, fetch! Crap, what time is it? A glance at the clock reveals that I've been asleep in nearly an hour. Thank goodness. And each practice should be finishing up soon. I throw on some casual clothes and head for the track. Somehow I get the feeling we won't be doing anything fancy for dinner. That's fine! <laughs> Emmy doesn't strike me as a very fancy sort of person. Still, I suppose there's a lot I have yet to know about Emmy. Despite our newfound closeness, I still feel like I don't know her as well as I should. Oh well, I have lots of time to fix that. And that's exactly what dating's all about. <laughs> to be honest, I'm looking forward to getting to know her more. I'm so caught up in my own thoughts that I hardly register that I'm already at the track. Emmy's nowhere to be found. I don't even see any signs of the track team. This could be embarrassing. I turn, my, I turn my head towards the girls' dormitory when I hear a shout. Hey, he's out! Aww. She's just cute. I, she could wear anything. I'd be like, she's adorable. I turn around and see Emmy making a beeline for me with a gym bag slung over her shoulder. She's changed into some decidedly more casual clothing. A pair of shorts and an olive green top. Her running blades have been replaced with more realistic looking legs that probably wouldn't fool anyone. Emmy doesn't seem to care about that, a fact which makes me smile. Hey, hey, he came! I mean, I figured he would, but still. I suddenly find myself wrapped in a rather affectionate hug, and it proves to be impossible for me to keep what, what must be the world's largest grin off my face. <laughs> well, of course I came. I'd be crazy not to, right? Emmy ponders for a moment. You know, that's true. I mean, I'm pretty amazing after all. I shrug in response. I certainly think so. It's an offhand remark, which is why I'm surprised to see that it seems to have caught Amy by surprise. She blushes and smiles warmly at me before planting a kiss on my lips. Aww, she was just planning more teasing, not authentication. <laughs> now it's my turn to be surprised. Amy steps back, resting her weight on the back heels, looking pleased with herself. The brain fumbles for an appropriate response. I, I should compliment you more often. Amy laughs and gives me a playful shove. Jerk. I throw an arm around Emmy's shoulder, and I'm pleased that when she immediately leans into me as if we're the most natural thing in the world. So, where to? I'm not actually sure. Where do people go on dates around here, anyway? That's a darn good question. I have got no idea. Why don't we just head to the Aura Market grab, uh, Aura Mart and grab something portable? Emmy says brightens at the idea. <gasps> a picnic! I think you're onto something, he said. Emmy snakes her arm around my waist so we begin to head for the front gate. I'm entirely unsure of what I meant to do in this situation, but at least Emmy seems to be equally clueless. That's the best! When you both have no idea what's going on, you just get to figure it out. And it's the one- it's wonderful. And the funny thing is actually this happens like, with multiple partners, because every relationship is different. They might have some themes that are very similar, but ultimately it's all a big guessing game and it's so much fun. Aw oh, man. I do fondly look back at the dating scene because the dating itself was always exciting and interesting. There's a lot of gaps of loneliness in between, yes, and there's often the, there's the stress that came with it. And I'm very happy with the way that my life has calmed down in that respect, but I do look fondly back on the dating years. Like, it's something I definitely like. And maybe that's why I enjoy playing these kinds of games. It's like, I get this kind of... By proxy, you gotta go through that thrill again. And maybe that's what people, why like older people still like watching anime that's about high school kids. Or like, I, I, TV, high school TV shows don't tend to be that interesting to me. But the high, the anime, like the slice of life school animes, like I love them. Even if they're not romantic, like, like I, I, I like the romantic ones, I like the non-romantic ones. I think it's because there's that, there's something about that time of life that's crazy and depressing and sad and confusing and frustrating but yet was so full of life and unknowns that it's just fun to recapture that feeling a little bit again. Like some people can make it creepy. I hope I don't. I hope you can see that I'm enjoying this just as like putting myself in the shoes of another character and just experiencing life again. Anyway, that's what really these things are supposed to be about. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, and she's in good clothes, okay. Um, Despite the relaxing feeling of being with Emmy, I still can't help but feel a little tense. What if I do something wrong? I hate to make a butt of myself. The trip to the Ottermai is com accompanied by Emmy's chatter about how practice went. I keep quiet for the most part, merely enjoying the warmth of being around Emmy. We get a few odd looks from passerbys, but I don't mind. Yeah, especially if this is like, if this is like in Japan, like the big, the very public PDAs would probably be very strange to see. <laughs> We wind up buying some bread, instant noodles, realizing too late that we can't actually cook the ladder at the park. <laughs> brilliant, guys, brilliant. Oh well, then I'll make it for lunch or something. That'll work. 
The park is located after a brief loss of direction that I blame entirely on Emmy. She, of course, blames me. We find a spot beneath a tree, sit down. I lean back against the trunk. Emmy sits across from me. Guess we should have brought a blanket or something to sit on, huh? Emmy shrugs. I don't mind. Neither do I. <laughs> Emmy tosses a package of bread and we dig in. Curry bread. Interesting. Guess I wasn't really paying attention to what I grabbed at the store. <laughs> he's just he's a cloud nine. He's just like, oh, whatever, man. You probably get convinced to buy a house or buy stocks in some scam company today. Hey, he's Sal. You like like your bread's a little spicy. I shake my head, trying in vain to keep an image of manliness. Ah, it's, it's hard to spicy at all. I see, I see. That must be why your face has gotten so red. Yes, exactly. Lack of spice. It's, uh, gotten my blood up because of the disappointment. Amy laughs and swallows the last of her bread. Well, if you can't handle it, I'll be happy to take it off your hands. Hey, just because you woofed down yours so quickly doesn't mean I'm going to just give you mine. Amy mock pouts, causing me to nearly choke on my bread with laughter. <laughs> oh, come on, he Sal. Aren't you supposed to be concerned with making sure I've got enough to eat now? We're dating, you know. So, Amy looks troubled all of a sudden. Can't say I feel any different. Hmm? What do you mean by that? What makes this a date? Is this what we would have done anyway, really? But this should feel different because before when we had lunch, we were friends. But now we're a level above friends. Sound like Rin. Laughter escapes and then grins. <laughs> well, she might have put, put the thought into my mind. We've talked about this sort of thing before. Really? About me? Not really. Just stuff, really. Rin thinks that, that change of label from friend to girlfriend seems arbitrary most of the time. Like there's no difference between the two. I can think of at least one, you know. You don't tend to kiss your friends quite as much. For the second time today, Amy blushes slightly and giggles. I, I suppose you're right. Exactly, I'm always right about this, things like this. Amy rolls her eyes and chuckles. Guess you're pretty smart, huh? I nod in agreement. Yep. <laughs> Even Mattel thinks so. He thinks I should go to some science study after graduation. Emmy raises an eyebrow. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm thinking I actually might do just that. Really, the more I consider the idea, the more it appeals to me. I make a mental note to look into it a little more closely. So what are you thinking of doing after graduation? Still planning on running? Emmy shrugs, seeming almost a bit hesitant. I don't know. If I'm good enough, I can find a team. If, I, if, if I'm good enough, I can find a team, I guess. I mean, you aren't sure? I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Really? Probably should, you know. Graduation isn't that far off. Amy fidgets a little nervously. Yeah, well, it's far enough, right? Besides, I've got other things to think about. There's a mischievous flash behind Emmy's eyes, and I suddenly find myself gloriously pinned against the tree. Oh, Emmy. I can see this being... like I, I, She doesn't seem to like to think about the future very much, which is interesting. That could be a lot. There could be a lot to that. A lot, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to be understanding more about that in the future. Like making sure this is a real date, right? I mean, if you don't kiss, it's not a real date at all. I suppose... Mm, <laughs> strawberries and curry. Not the best combination, but I don't think I mind. Emmy steps, sits on my, uh, back on my legs and grins again. There, science would approve, right? I have the oddest mental image of Mutel nodding seriously and making a mark on some checklist. Can't help but laughing at the idea. <laughs> well, I'll admit, this is the first time I've ever witnessed a kiss being met with laughter. Should I feel offended? <laughs> no, I'm sure science approves. Emmy beams at me, and I find it increasingly difficult to keep my brain functioning properly. Like, it's work, brain, work. Oh, good. It's at this point I noticed that Emmy has stolen the remainder of my curry bread while I was otherwise occupied with images of teachers wielding clipboards. Hey! Emmy tries to look innocent, but co considering she just crammed the last bit of my bread in her mouth, it does not appear to be working. <laughs> Thief! A shrug from my companion is all I get in response. You use your feminine wiles on me. Wasn't that hungry anyway, but I still feel like the point needs to be made. Amy seems confused by the face, feminine wiles, but the understanding dawns on her features after a moment's thought. Wasn't anything of the sort. You were laughing. Feminine wiles didn't involve laughing. Guess I can't argue with that. It doesn't change your thievery. Amy laughs at my injured tone and gives me a playful shove. Fine, you can have the instant noodles. 
Are you kidding? That stuff's terrible. If anything, you should definitely eat it as a punishment. Another laugh and the girl sitting on my legs. Both of which have fallen asleep by now. Oh, pfft. I twitch one leg, tried to wake it up, which has the unintended effect of unbouncing Emmy, who falls aside with a startling beep. Oh, sorry about that. My leg fell asleep on me. Emmy remains on the ground, giggling. I stand up a little shakily, feeling the nerves in my legs return to normal. My eyes wander over the scenery we're fixing on the figure of Emmy, who has yet to get up. Aww. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> her hair split out around her head, her arms spread, and laughing is bubbling through her mouth. Okay, I don't know if the kiss or this would make a better thumbnail. This one might make the better thumbnail, because the kiss feels more like intimate moment. This feels more like thumbnail moment. Everything about Emmy seems condensed into this one image. Her energy, her spirit, her childish giggle. The urge to lay down on the grass with her rises swiftly from the back of my mind to the forefront of my thoughts, and indeed I'm, conv I'm convinced that I would love nothing more than to do just that. Unfortunately, the sun has set. It's probably time for us to get back to the dormitories. Well, I may be happy to stay out here all night. I don't think I have that ability. Besides, homework soon beckons. It wouldn't make sense to start thinking about things like university and slack off, would it? I extend my hand to Emmy to help her up. We should probably get going. Emmy makes a sour face. You're right. She grabs my proffled hand and I pull her to my feet and into a hug. This time, I'm the one who kisses her and able to resist having Emmy against me. Seems a shame to leave, you know. Yeah, it does. But if we don't get back to school soon, we'll probably get in trouble. Emmy pokes me in the ribs playfully. And you need to do your homework, I'm sure. Sadly, you're absolutely right. I throw my arm around her shoulders. We make a trek back to school, accompanied by occasional bouts of laughter as our conversation jumps from subject to subject. Everything from running to school, the particular way that one of the cafeteria workers smells. This is good. Very solid relationship here. All too soon, we find ourselves outside the girls' dormitory building. Well, I guess I'll be going then. I guess so, huh? Emmy grins at me with that mischievous look. Are you going to be able to survive without me? I laugh. I'm sure I'll manage. How terrible. Aren't you supposed to say something like, I'll be counting the seconds you are away? Nah, I don't think so. Emmy pulls me down to a quick goodbye kiss and steps back, looking unexpectedly shy. Thanks for dinner. I really had fun. Honestly, I did. So, so did I. I think we should, have to, we should have to do this again sometime. Emmy laughs in my deadpan delivery and, sound and nods. See you bright and early tomorrow morning, right? You've got to run off the bread after all. Of course, despite the fact that you ate most of it. Yes, despite that. See you later, he sal. As Emmy turns to head inside, I notice something weird. Something so weird I'm surprised I didn't notice it earlier. She's limping slightly, favoring the left leg. Hey, Emmy. Hmm? Is your leg okay? Emmy looks confused, or at least fakes confusion. What are you talking about? Your right leg, you're limping. There's some briefest flash of concern on Emmy's face. Either she didn't want me to know, or she didn't think I'd notice, or I prefer to think she just didn't realize it. Oh, that. She shrugs casually. Must have gotten knocked, up, knocked a little out of alignment during the picnic. No idea what would have caused that, of course. I think back to being pinned under the tree. Oh. Ah. You should have told me. We could have stopped and fixed it, you know. Emmy waves a hand airily. Eh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it, okay, Hisao? It's fine. I don't get the feeling that she's convincing herself as well as me. <sighs> oh, fetch. <laughs> well, this is a pickle. Um... Fortune favors the bold, fortune favors the bold, but honestly, okay. I think I trust her. That's what I think I would want to do. I can be concerned, but I've 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 spoken my concern. She says not to worry about it. She is the kind of person to throw herself into problems and to not take care of them properly. And the nurse does have concerns about her making sure that, like, make sure her, like, implants are working properly and all that. But 
I think that I like I think that it's important to have a level of trust. She lives with her condition. She understands it far better than we do. It's concerning. But we've addressed the concern. We've brought it up. She's told us not to worry about it. And that it's okay. I'm sure it could cause problems in the future. And I don't want her to get more hurt. But I think it's more important to let her be her. And let me be me. And not be crazy. And I, Every time I make a decision like this and I think it through like carefully, I've always made the wrong choice. So I probably should press Evie. But... I don't think I'm going to because I think it's important to understand that, that we, can, we we need to, to trust her. We need to be able to be okay and comfortable with her being in charge of herself. If we notice things like that in the future, maybe that's what we should learn from this. Pay attention to more in the future and if we notice it in the future, we can bring it up sooner. And maybe just try and help her to be more comfortable. Maybe she's... And I'm guessing that there, the issue could be lingering. Like she feels like she doesn't want her legs to interfere with like the date. She doesn't want us to have to focus on her legs because it's so much not a part of her. You know, kind of like the idea like why she's in track. It's not just because she loves it. It's also because she wants to prove that her missing legs aren't going to destroy, stop her from doing what she loves. So I'm going to let it rest. I'm probably going to be an idiot, but I'm going to let it rest. Well, she's probably fine. I imagine she'd say something if, she was re uh, if it was really a problem. Heck, she'd probably get annoyed if I kept bringing it up. Now, Geely, I need to get going. Your attempts to keep me around are doomed to fail. <laughs> of course. Just prolonging the goodbye, I suppose. Another grin lights up Emmy's face. Good night, Ethel. Good night. As she lives inside, I find myself hoping she's okay despite her assurance that she's fine. I think I can call this a successful first date. Heck, any day the angel of the Emmy pinning me up against a tree to kiss me can't be bad, can it? I head back to my room, mentally thanking the gods that Kenji doesn't ambush me, doesn't ambush me in the hallway, and gets started on my homework. So we'll see what happens, but I think that's important. Like, I mean, it's part of any relationship, whether friendship or otherwise. Like, it's important to be there and to communicate clearly. But here's the thing: like, we pretty established, pretty much established that she does feel comfortable talking about us. Like, remember on the the rooftop. We, uh, she brought up the topic of her like night terrors and although she normally wouldn't talk about it she did choose to talk about it with us she does trust us or at least she's re she's trusting us probably more than she trusts anybody else so if she brushes something off like that she probably knows best we should worry be concerned because we care about her but I don't know we're not trying to be protective of her. And I don't think she wants someone who's protective of her. I think she just wants somebody who she likes and she wants to be around and feels like she can have a normal relationship with. So I think I made the right choice. I have no idea what, whether or not, don't tell me if I did or not, cause I'll have to find out on my own. I'd, ha I'd be so sad if I got a bad ending. Uh, but you know, that's the nature of these types of the games. And that's the thing. Like, I think if I pushed it, I would have put a sour note at the end of the day and not done any good, ultimately. I feel like if she needs to talk to us about something, she will. And I think she's growing to trust us. And so if there's something that she's not quite comfortable sharing yet, or a vulnerability that she still clutches to, time will help us the most. As long as she's okay and doesn't need extra attention or anything. Now, if the nurse chastises us for it, the next time we might press her about it, but that's because we've been we we have a bit more of a motivation other than just like blindly wanting to like like be super protective because that can be bad. Let people be people. Let Emmy be Emmy. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for joining me for this wonderful edition of Kadawa Sojo. Oh my gosh, what fun! <laughs> I, it's sad though because like we're in Act Three. I'm guessing that there's like probably three acts in an epilogue. But I, I don't know. I, I, someone's mentioned before, I can't remember, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to play it to the end, whatever it is, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. Like this game is my, I, I, every week I usually have a smile game. I have a game that like, it's not like about overthinking or about enga engaging in a deep story. It's just about like enjoying myself. This is my enjoying myself playthrough this, of this uh, season of this like current time. And so I'm very happy for it. It makes my day every time. So 
thanks again for all those who mentioned it to me and recommended it because I'm super happy I'm playing it. And we'll have to come back to it next week. So thank you guys so much for joining me. As always, it's a pleasure having you around. I love sharing this stuff with you. And you guys are so fun because you talk to me about it back and share your thoughts and opinions about what I come across. So thank you for that. You guys are amazing. And until the next video, watch me. Have a see me next. I'll see you there. Thank you.